Hi, I'm Kathy Itson, and welcome to this uh, segment of the Three Gs. Today, I have a kind of an interesting thing. I want to talk about prayer because an interesting thing came up the other day at the retreat. First of all, I like to try and meditate and pray and have quiet time to center in the mornings. That's what I, I really benefit from it, and I love it, and I try to do that. And that happens about three or four times a week. I would like it to happen seven times a week, and inevitably it won't. And the reason it won't is because my grandchildren are visiting. I have an early morning meeting. I was up really late the night before, and I'm sleeping in because I need to zoom off to work, and it just doesn't happen. And then I feel a little guilty about it, like, for gosh sakes, if this is an important thing in your life, why, why, if this is central, why am I not doing it? And at the little retreat that we had last weekend, it was very interesting because one of the facilitators, who's not from here, but she started out a discussion with a quote from Mother Teresa, which basically was, in order to encounter God, to have a relationship with God, we need quiet. It's essential. And she said, can people share a word or two about that? And about five people out of 15 said strongly, I really disagree with that. And she was kind of taken aback. And it was an interesting short discussion because many of us recognize the truth. There's a truth in that, that in order to experience our relationship with God, we need to be half quiet. And other people were like, what the heck? God is experienced in noise. God is experienced in busyness. We don't not experience God because we're not quiet. And it really struck a nerve for me because among other things, it seems like sort of a classist attitude in that the people who hear this, who say this, tend to be people who are single and they're priests or nuns and they don't have the same responsibilities every day that many of the rest of us have. And so that always strikes me the wrong way. And when I think of people who are poor and they're a mother of six or they're a single mom or a single father of two or three or you've got two babies at home or you've got many other life situations, you can't just make that space in your life very easily. And if you do, you're cutting out your sleep. And is that the kind of God we believe in that only makes intimacy with God available for people who have that luxury of time and space that not everybody does because of myriad circumstances? And um, I was thinking about that and I was kind of praying about that because that happened to me all the time. And then the other night, we had a lovely discussion with our oldest son, and it was really intimate. It was a quiet time that we were together, and it was a beautiful reflection on his on growing up and becoming a father and dealing with things of his youth and, and all of that. I don't have that same discussions with my other kids, at this, and there's all kinds of reasons for that. Um, and I thought, oh, this kind of an intimate discussion is great, and it's important, but it's not everything. My other kids were at for parties and family gatherings and getting to their house and sharing dinners. But that doesn't mean it's a less relationship. It's a different part of a relationship. And isn't it the same with God? There's times where we're quiet and we're able to realize a truth about ourselves or get a different perspective on things. And that might be sitting actually in a time that we put to prayer, or it might be going for a walk, or it might be a listening to a beautiful piece of music. And we have these insights or at worship. And we also experience God when we're running around doing what needs to happen because that's what needs to happen. And God is just as much there. And it's not that we need some privileged place in life to set time aside to be with God. It's like we're in all these different relation aspects of relationship with God all the time. And it's not that one is better than another, but it's that we need to try and sometimes be able to experience all of it. We experience God in the rush of family living. We experience God as a student needing to do what needs to happen. We experience God going to work. We experience God when we're in grief and we're in depression and we're dealing with disastrous issues in our lives and we get out of bed in the morning or we put one foot in front of the other. All of that is our relationship with God. All of that is contributing to that fullness of relationship and all of that is prayer. 
Have time when you have time and otherwise let it go. Don't be guilty and know that God is just as much with you every moment of the day, regardless of what you're doing. Amen.